This presentation involves the Surpresa Fine Gold Prospect at Firefield, New South Wales. It discusses the soil geochemistry grid that was conducted over the area of 1.5 kilometres by 0.4 kilometres and appears to be open-ended. Auger traverses were conducted over a few of the higher gold anomalies in the area. We're now into the strongly anomalous uh, area. We're still in the fairly soft sediments. And we're now at 380 or 0.38 grams. And 5 metres on. Now we're up to 964 or just, just short of a gram per tonne out of this hole. And fascinating is this one at 2.6 grams and this, this was our pick when we drilled it. Um, this is the contact between the silicified rock behind me and the soft rocks and this zone was particularly soft and I'm very pleased to see this one here now. The next hole is 0.4 and picked out when we were auger drilling. It, it looked right. So. so that's the soft zone it's picked out? Yeah, the gold is res responding to the shear zone between the hard silicified rocks and the soft sediments. It's quite incredible. The silicified zone on this side is staying anomalous. We get the best right on the shear zone, but the silicified zone is still strongly anomalous. So what sort of width is that colon in this zone here? about 45 metres which is particularly elevated and you're right you, know, and you look at that land surface I defy anyone any prospector to pick it as a mm. as a target mm. it's come out in the, the soil but the, the high silica is not barren so we've got to treat the whole lot with care but that hill head down across the paddock with the soft zone sort of going through that huge mud or iron bark tree and continuing to head down across the paddock for goodness knows where. So it's pretty much open ended down in this uh, Well there's some tricky uh, south. In geology if we go further down that we've been aware of for years. And the whole lot sort of come back into one line. Or one major corridor. Mm. Um, but that's all quite testable, easy access ground there. So. so what do you see going forward there, Colin? Um, geochemistry the with the uh, follow yep. The quickest, easiest, most efficient way to define your target. All the drilling is absolutely built for this stuff. Yeah. Um, it just crisps up the target and gives you numbers straight away. Yep. And from then on you've got, you just go into RC and see if you've got an robot. And this is pretty standard assay, we don't need to do uh, any gravity recovery, so yeah. the whole uh, process uh, is fairly it's much... Straight uh, down the line, yeah. simple Yulgar and Western Australia shear zone disseminated gold. That's a 100 metre line spacing there and 25 metres that way, mm -hmm. and they've been done north-south where they should have been done east west. Yeah. I mean that's with hindsight. Um, but they're 100 metre lines. 100 metre lines. Yep. Um, there's an awful lot of quality left in this. I mean, from from there to there, at 10 metres wide, in tons open cut. If you, you know, if you had a 10 metre bone, yep, he would be figured you across there. You know, another million tons there, type of thing, and something else there. So that's very much underdone with soil because not only is it 100 metres apart, but it's going at 45 degrees to the line, so that makes it about 130 metres apart in effect. Yes. Um, that's an awful long way. Uh, if you're delineating this for an ore body, you'd be doing drill traverses every 25 metres, which is that distance there. Yep. That's how many you do to um, build up a jork compliant ore reserve along that. Mm. And you'd have, say, three RC holes on every one of those, and You'd get a you'd get what's in the ground. I mean, yeah. you know, um, 
Yeah, I mean, that's y- the sort y- of thing you would be, you, Your target in there would be yeah. a million tonnes. Yeah. Uh, open cuttable, the, the ore could go forever down underneath, but in the 50 metre, not the 50 metre zone, you'd, you'd get a million tonnes in there. What are those key things or boxes that ticks? The mineralisation doesn't protrude out of the ground because it's full of high silica quartz veining, which is obvious. So the, la- the landscape doesn't reveal anything, even though the ore comes right to the grassroots. So it was very difficult to prospect. And yeah, and the gold yeah. is so fine that when you pan for it, you can hardly see it. Um, and it's disseminated low-grade stuff, which they couldn't have done a darn thing with anyway. Yeah. They had no interest, no technology, in, or any re- commercial reason why they would even want to find it. Yeah. But the world's totally different for us. It's drill delineatable. Um, it's not been tested. It's not had the high-grade lenses cut out of it by the old guys. It's intact. And goodness knows how big it is or how small it is. Uh, yeah, I mean that's to be determined, but the the so it's a it's a completely yeah. unworked gold um, area, which has got the rock just below your feet, under yeah. the soil, marked by the soil. So you don't get that every day. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Most things that are under your feet have been well and truly. I mean, you go to Bendigo and try and find a kilometre long gold zone that's never been found. Yeah. Um, just impossible. Um, and we've done that with. work that grew out of Sopresa. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, we always thought it's that... It's a great stuff. Yeah, it is a good stuff, but I mean, we always thought that the Sopresa area, um, in terms of um, the three drill holes we put in there on top of the auger and geochem, yeah, yeah. Uh, looked interesting and, and was clearly difficult to prospect for the old-timers yeah. as well. The fine gold, as far as I can see from those assays, that fine gold is spread through the rock. That's why we're getting broad zones of clearly anomalous material, like half gram. Probably average is half a gram over 30, 40 metres. Yeah. Um, it's disseminated through the rock. It's If it was a pure vein thing, you'll have completely barren rock interdispersed with rich veins. Yes. And you can't do an organ line across that and get a good result. Yeah, but it's too a spotty. Good result because it's like a cloud of fine gold, which is the stuff which is built to drill an assay and delineate in the conventional manner by today's point of view. Um, so it's, a, it's an amazingly good position to be in. Yeah, it's it's taken a, a while to get here. <laughs> oh yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, there's so many areas here to follow up, so we've we've obviously well, we tried to... We have fall flat in our face on the other one, but this is unexpected. You know, we come yeah. into a coarse metal area and we start getting fine gold. We start recovering it out of the plant. We think, yeah. this is coming from somewhere. We get surprised we get fine gold there. We've looked at the fine gold. All of a sudden, it's following out. And it's all, it's, there's basically no base metals with that either. It's just, yeah. a, it's just a cloud of gold in the rock. Yeah. Um, talk about a piece of cake for a heap bleach open cut. It hasn't even got high arsenic and, and lead and That's stuff right. in it. That's right. There's no negative. gold problem. in rock. Yeah. Um, I'm tempted to think of um, Nevada with the, yeah. with the gold just blending through the rock in, in micro form. Look, if it hangs together over a broad area here, I mean, it'd be very, very interesting. There's no question about that. Well, it's doing its best at this stage. Yeah, it is. I mean, you can't ask for more in the, in the little amount of follow-up we've had on the geochem. You couldn't ask for more, really. No, that that would be a positive result for any company anywhere. Yeah. What do you, what do you see as the next... Um, Steps in, in broad terms for the area. Uh, geochem infill. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's findable by geochem. That's how come we're here. Yep. So we get the assays through uh, the auger. We mightn't be able to just saturate it with auger drilling because of time factors. It would be a good next step. Um, but I, I'd say we, we do the soil geochem to pick the better zones. We do some more auger geochem because it's worked such a treat and then we put some RC across it to sort of show the commercial quality of the mm. thing. If it passes all those things then it's simply a matter of lots of RC drilling. Yep. Just follow the line and pour the money into the RC drilling and get an ore body. We're not really talking at this stage about um, 
uh, geological bedding or any dip or, or angle on the mineralisation because at this stage we're still too early but it looks as if it's fairly broad zone of mineralisation so um, is that a, an issue for determination that uh, if we take these results at surface what do we expect in terms of their distribution uh, in 3, 3D below the surface? So far, because this, this shear zone here is exactly parallel to the platinum ones Yep. It, it's not in line with them, it's a, it's a parallel system. Yes. Um, and everything we've seen is that it's steep dipping. Okay. So it's not that sensitive to which way you drill. Okay, that's good to um, know. But we'd find that out fairly early anyway with the first few. We would few. find it out, but not necessarily in the first drill program. Yeah. Um, the first drill program is the one where you take 50 50 chance. You know, sure, you which put way? You drill down, whether you got it right. Yeah. And you can go that way and then come back that way to sort yep. of theoretically fence it in with a V type yep. thing. But you need the assays right there to yep. know which way it's gone because yep. this isn't that obvious. In, there's no great big quartz zone. Or That's right. Thing. You've just got gold and rock. Mm, mm. So you really need the assays. It's not, not an obvious load as far as we know to this day. But um, I don't think it's uh, a fall on your face kind of risk. I think the, the shear zone's steep, so even if you went in the least efficient direction, you'd still traverse the ground. In terms of confirmation of the shear zone itself, what, what gives you that that confidence uh, that the, the structural component is is the shear zone through here? Well, it's exactly parallel, like absolutely exactly parallel to the platina Gillenbine shear zone. And in the auger drilling, we found the shear zone. Right. Um, so we, we came across through soft sediments. We went to very soft sheared sediments. And then we went into very hard solidified rocks. That's the way it laid out. The high gold is right on the contact of the two. And it's a shear zone contact. Um, we did the same thing um, back towards Sapresa. We went in we got 10 parts per million silver, which is unheard of near the Yes. And again, that was in a really soft zone. Yep. Um, so the soft zone reflects where the rocks have been sheared, basically. Mm. And you produce linear anomalies rather than just big fat round um, patches. Uh, the anomalies might be 10, 20, 30 metres wide but a kilometre long. Yep. They're linear. Um, they cut through things, basically. You can say shear zone, you can say fault line. A multitude of fault lines. That's what a shear zone is. Sure, and and our model, albeit at early stage, would be to look for subparallel lines potentially. We have subparallel yeah. lines in the geochem now. Yeah. So uh, we know they're there. It's not a single line. Um, we've got at least three lines now, and no reason to expect that we wouldn't end up with five or six. Yep. Um, and they'll have good and bad patches. Don't, don't ever get the idea that they're all going to be made by an engineer and go straight <laughs> lines um, without any starts and stops. Yeah. Um, this is Mother Earth. It's got every trick under the sun. But it's just that you can do it so refreshingly straightforward and at a great speed. Yes. Um, that's what makes it exciting and the fact that we're the first ones doing it. Yeah. You know, we're not third company on the block sort of working over this, you know, we're the first ones to get in there. We could have absolutely anything under that. Yeah. Um, doesn't mean to say we will have, but sure. my goodness. But it's a good starting point because... It's a starting um, starting point yeah. because we don't actually have an upper limit on what we can find. Yep. The, um, the Nevada model of, of gold in rocks does some extraordinary things. So if we've got any association with that gold in rock type um, model... Um, boy, we don't have a we don't have a ceiling on where it can finally take us. Yeah. All right, it's pretty uh, early, but still uh, nicely developing at this stage. So, uh, um, you know, it's a good way forward for the company to to push this up the the list of priorities. No doubt about that. It's an easy way to push up the list because it's straightforward technically. Yeah. Delegatable. It's standard. People understand it. The yep. Investors understand it. Yep. Um, the jork compliance thing's built for it. Yep. Um, everything's fine.